Hi there students. Today we're going to look at character turnaround sheets. A turnaround sheet is a studio asset that's used either by the artist or other artists collaborating together to create a product. It's kind of like a standard go-to blueprint that helps everybody with their all unique and different artistic styles be able to draw the same thing with consistency. It's to show the character or the studio asset from different angles. So with this character we see from the front, the side, and kind of a three-quarter angle. And oftentimes there's extra stuff added in. These are samples of what the character's different expressions and emotional states would look like. There's also fun little visual notations of silhouettes on what this character does with his body language and personality, and then small little detailed images of function. So with this guy, he's got prehensile hair that he uses to grab things, and tiny skinny little limbs that he has hidden inside. These are called proportion guides. It helps us to get the exact same point of drawing uh, when we're multiplying the image. So if this is where the bottom of his foot is, it helps us draw the bottom of his feet in different areas. If this is where his eye line's at, it helps us uh, remain consistent with proportions. Now we're doing this digitally in class. Here's an example of a kind of a bare bones turnaround of a mech. Now it is in high detail and there's not really much uh, added to it yet for presentation, but you see we've got a forward, profile shot, and a back shot. These are called orthographic poses. An orthograph means there's no perspective. You're looking dead on at the figure, flat, like a sticker. The profile shot, if you notice, it's got the arm removed so that we can see how the torso functions from the side. For a 3D modeler, or a costume designer, or if you're sculpting maquettes in a 3D studio, this is an invaluable resource to see how things function in here. So let's look at some production tricks in building an actual turnaround. Much of this is duplicated and reproduced. In essence, replicating portions of that and making small alterations and changes. This drastically expedites or speeds up your workflow to the point where you can generate large amounts of material in a short amount of time. We'll also look at how do you control your line quality for detail and hygiene. Have your restrictions in place and these restrictions are going to drive your visual library, your form language, your design, your storytelling, everything. Here's some Baroque architecture from the outside. Here's some crystals and some different crystalline structures and then going back to some priestly type designs and monk designs with heavy plate mail armor. Now there aren't that many silhouettes from this exploration. There wasn't too much time for the demo, but I did kind of explore a wide variety of different approaches and it wasn't until I got to this one here that I liked the kind of the overall look and I went into kind of a heavy plate mail uh, ornate type of a figure with a shield with baggy clothes but with armor to protect the areas where it counts. This is the line art extraction from the silhouette and I'm just going to go from this kind of a loose line art sketch into the turnaround and with all of that information in place it really makes the turnaround process a lot easier. With the turnaround, I made good use of these guides. You can pull these horizontal guides down to help you with proportions. I started with a base anatomy sketch, and after drawing half of this figure, I just duplicate the layer, flip him horizontal, and reassemble him. He might look a little janky at first, and you might need to go in and kind of clean things up a little bit, but with this anatomy figure in place, we're doing a very static pose, you know, just like a doll. Arms out, legs out, so that we can see every angle of this figure. I turned down the anatomy sketch as a base, and then from there, and just starting to loosely build the overall design of the figure, looking dead on at you. Again, this guy was done in halves, and then I duped and flipped the layers and assembled them. Be careful when putting them together. You might get them too narrow, might get them too fat, but you want to kind of generally clean it up. Now we can go ahead and delete the anatomy and we can turn down the opacity and then go for the actual clean line art for the turnaround. And from a distance this may look clean, but it is janky and there's really no definition in a lot of these areas. This would give a 3D modeler a nightmare. Now this takes some time and it is very sterile in appearance 
and it loses kind of the life and action that these original sketches had. The reason for that is because this is essentially a blueprint. A little line weight never hurts. It kind of helps things pop a little bit and clearly define the forms. For example, the chest plate right here, I'm having a little bit of hard time separating it from the rest of all this clutter. And so in a different layer, just added a boost of line weight to it. Now, again, you can do that in halvesies as well. And we can just apply that to one side, duplicate it, flip it, and position it. And there was a very specific method that I used to create the line art. So to do that, I used just your average hard edge round brush without pressure sensitivity turned on. That way each stroke is consistent in its thickness. And if I needed smaller lines, just shrink the brush down. How do you get clean lines like this? Um, it is a combination of motor skill, practice, and first you draw a line and if you don't like it, just undo until you get the line that you want. And then you'll start to get into a rhythm. Your arm will warm up, you'll get into flow, and gradually the lines that you want start to come together from there. What you would do to do the back is duplicate the front layer and then selectively erase things that won't be in the front, which would look like this. I need to erase parts of the hand, need to erase all of the torso, and that's how I got this loose base. And then I'll go in and use these designs to flesh out the rest of the image. And if we kill the base layer, add a little bit of line weight to it as well. And I did not include the cloak on the back because that would have obscured some of the uh, anatomy here, made it kind of hard to see. For the profile shot, it's a little bit different. Uh, you need to know how the anatomy works for a figure from the side. And so in a new layer, build your basic stick figure and looking over here to see where the chest plate is and where his belly is going to be. Here's where the pelvis is going to be. Here's where the knees are going to be of the leg. The feet are going to begin here. And it's going to look a little bit more flat when you look at the feet from the side. The shoulder is going to be right about here. Even though this guy's pauldrons are way up here, the anatomy of the form has the shoulder at this area. So over here, I'm going to draw the shoulder down to the elbow, down to the hand. And now I've got my detached limb to go and draw that portion. And I've got a good base that I can start building my anatomy off of. Just your typical anatomical stick figure. And then we can flesh this out. and start to build the form by looking over here in this area. So this comes out about here is where it stops and starts to slant inward. This has some really big bulky armor. He's got like this belt down here with this, uh, this kind of a dress-like garb. He's got these huge pauldrons, so we're going to lose uh, some of the form here. I'm not going to include the pauldrons in this, just I'm going to use the, uh, the armor here. And so just by using these basic shapes, you can build anything just by referencing the form. Find where the inner ear is going to be located at. All right, draw a vertical line and it should come down between the heel and the arch. That's the balance point for the figure. Otherwise, uh, your figure might be off and you might want to tip over. Now this is the loose design pass. The line art still needs to happen over the top of that, but uh, we would go through the exact same process to finish up this figure. But just to take a little mental break, I decided to build a halberd, a gigantic staff with a huge blade on it. Uh, we, could, we could put this behind the figure or next to it, make it look like he's holding it maybe. I might even just use this as a presentation element uh, to help kind of frame a title on the top. And to make weapons like this, again, working in halvesies is your friend. I basically just drew half of it, uh, made a couple little bumps and changes here, held down the shift key for some straight lines and duplicated and flipped it, made some manual adjustments throughout as we went. Uh, we can always go in and manually draw in textures, for example, like a grip or maybe even some cloth that wraps around the handle to kind of give it some personality. And we're finished. The turnaround is complete. So those of you guys who are my students in class know that we always add presentation to our work at the very end. I have a separate YouTube vid that covers all this, but let's just break it down, what was used. So I just added 
color. This is kind of an archaic society. So I decided to do kind of an earthy tone. Dropped in a rough paper photo texture and then I erased it out of the way where the main idea was. I just got a soft edged eraser and just feathered it out of there so that none of that clashes with this line art. Bottom right hand corner, always do this in your work. Name, what the project is, and date. Got a spotlight layer here. All that is, just get a dark brush and gently brush some of the corners and the edges of the frame. That pushes the eye inward towards where you want the viewer to look. This is a vignette. So a vignette, again, is a simple shape and that's used as a grouping element. It's to say that all of these things go together and they are not the rest of these things here. And that vignette is just a solid white rectangle with a drop shadow added to it and some of the opacity turned down to make it not quite that intense. Gave it a title. And also I drew a couple of silhouettes that kind of show this figure in action. It gives a little more context, a little more style to it. And here's my line drawing reference. I added some paint to it. I just kind of scratched it up with paint. Down here we got a text box. I didn't type anything into it yet, just filled it with lorem ipsum. You, for students, would include a capsule or a brief little summary of what this is, how it works, and kind of overall what the story is behind this character. Here's our text, and we know that if you control click any layer, it will select that layer, and now you can also paint inside of it now. So what I did is I just used the color blue. So then uh, turn that on, and we got a nice little glow effect that happens inside there, a nice little transition. Check it from a distance to the point where you can't really see everything all by itself anymore and ask yourself, does the main idea stand out? Does it serve its purpose and does it function? And I would say, yeah. So students, I hope you found this helpful. I look forward to seeing everybody in class. Bye-bye.